Welcome to Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann, the show that brings you thoughtful perspective through the lens of Christ. Join us every Saturday morning at 1130 a.m. on The Bridge Austin Radio, broadcasting on both 1120 a.m. and 101.1 FM. Whether you're on the go, hitting the gym, or simply relaxing with your favorite beverage, Triumphant Victorious Reminders will empower you to live in Christ with heavenly wit. Teresa Ann reminds us that true perspective isn't just about being positioned correctly, it's about being positioned in Christ, who is the ultimate perspective. So tune in and let your friends know to join us as we journey towards seeing mission fields in the midst of battlefields. This is Triumphant Victorious Reminders, with Teresa Ann, and we're excited to have you with us. Well, welcome to another episode of Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann, and I'm so excited that you are joining me today, yet again on another Saturday at 1130 on The Bridge Austin. This is so exciting as today I'm going to be sharing an excerpt from what this show is really derived from, and that is my book that was released back in March of 2020, titled Heavenly Wit, Seeing Mission Fields in the Midst of Battlefields. And at the end of the show, I will kind of let you know where you can actually purchase this book. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. That Lord, after today's episode, may we be so refreshed, not just in ourselves or in our moment, but refreshed in who you are. Thank you, Father, that every person under the sound of my voice would not hear what Teresa has to say, but only what you have to say. And anything else that's not of you would fall on deaf ears in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for ears to hear you eyes to see you, and even a mouth to speak what you want us to speak. In the mighty name of Jesus, not just from the place of being and saying the right things, but because we're beginning to know you. And in knowing you and your goodness, we can't help but declare the greatness of who you are and seeing life in a completely different way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So on today's episode, I'm actually going to be going through one or two chapters of Heavenly Wit. And the one I really want to focus on today is titled from chapter five, Arise, Shine. And as you, I don't know if you've heard the other episodes um, that started a few weeks ago, but you're going to see this common thread throughout Triumphant Victorious Reminders. And that is this that it's one thing to be reminded of triumphant, victorious things, but it's another thing to be reminded of the person who is triumphant victory, and that is Jesus. And let me tell you, I have to be, I need to be reminded of who he is at every given moment of the day. And it's not just from a place of uh, I got an, I just got to remember, but it's just knowing that there's going to, there's going to be things that come at us from every direction, things that we didn't plan. And of course it's in our hearts, I believe, and in our minds that we want to respond the right way, but how often we feel like we've failed. And in this, on the show, it's really to say, okay, listen, you messed up. All right, guess what? We get to quickly repent and let's just get back up and run with him. So let's go to to this quote that I got a few years ago, and it was, we were not meant to talk about how dark it is. We were simply meant to shine the light of God in the midst of darkness. How often do we talk about the darkness? And yet because of that, we're not doing anything good. We're not overcoming darkness with light. And Jesus was very specific about being the light of the world, not because we are the light, but because he is the source of light that we are living in and from. So here's the title, Arise, Shine. And here's how it starts, but how? (laughs) How do we do that? 
It sounds great, doesn't it? How do we not talk about the darkness and yet tackle it at the same time? This is the answer that is revealed through the lives of those who saw God's way of living was more important than their own, even unto death for the cause of Christ. But it couldn't just be because they were great at being martyrs. It had to be because they were in awe and wonder of God. Like it just had to be. And so here's something that we have to remember that being the light requires something to happen. And that is the flesh and ego are to die. And the true spirit of God within us is to arise, just as it says in Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So why do we arise and shine? Well, it says it clearly right there. Because the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. This is the only reason we can arise and shine. It's all because of God and his glory. Now, just think about that alone. Like, I don't want to just pass over that. Like, it's just, okay, yeah, it's his glory. Like, you guys, this is his glory. Like, what? Like, we're in such awe wonder of great people and great art, great art and great things. But... Are we in awe and wonder of this glory of God? Like, can we even wrap our minds and hearts around such a thought? So as we just kind of say that or pause there for a moment, the glory of God, his splendor is where we start from. That's how we remain humble, okay? We don't remain humble just by telling ourselves how awful we are or how we deserve hell, although those things are true. True humility comes from the place of awe wonder of God, because when you're an awe wonder of God, you can't be an awe wonder of anything else. That is how Jesus was able to step out of his own deity, of his own royalty, and live among amongst us as humans. It wasn't because he was great at disciplining himself. It was because it started with his awe and wonder of his father. That's where it started. That's where we're missing it because we've gotten religion in right in the middle of, of all of our relationship with God. And some of us are like, well, I'm not a religious, but we all are in some way. And it may not be religious, like as in church religious, but it can be religious in doing the things we've done because we've always done it that way. That's religious too. It's doing things that uh, put a burden on ourselves and others. Sometimes religion is expecting other people to do things that we're not even willing to do ourselves. You know, that religious spirit is so, it comes in so many different forms and in so many different ways. It can come in the form of relationships. It's obvious in, you know, churches, but are we, can we see it even in the way that we treat people at work or maybe the way that We do relationship with our kids or our parents or, you know, it can be anything and everything. It covers every gamut of life. And so let's just get back to that place today of this triumphant, victorious reminder that we get to be an awe wonder of his glory. And because of his glory, because of his glory, that's how we're able to arise and shine. Now, this is what it looks like to arise and shine. Okay, these are practical ways of how we arise and shine. Let me give you some examples. Loving our enemies. Yes, I said it. Loving our enemies. And our enemies don't even have to be quote unquote enemies. They can be people that irritate us or agitate us. They can be people that frustrate us. So how, how do we do that? Well, Jesus was very clear about what it looked like to love our enemies. And that it can be found in Luke 6, 
27 through 36. This can be found in Matthew 5, verses 44 through 48. It could be found in Romans 12. Read all of 12, and specifically 9 through 21 of chapter 12. Micah 6, 8, Proverbs 25, 21 through 22, just to name a few scriptures, okay? So here's what it looks like. Being kind to the unkind. Doing good to those who hate us. Blessing those who curse us. So if you kind of see this trend here, this thread, what they do to you, you do the opposite. Now, let me just stay right there for a moment. A lot of us would call that killing them with kindness. But that even there is not coming from the right place. It's not, it's coming out of spite. And that doesn't honor God either, right? So how do we start from the place of loving our enemies? By what? Being in awe and wonder of God. And then that place of awe and wonder is where everything else should stem from. And then that's how we don't operate out of spite because still spite is, is it's, it's, um, it seems right, but it's so far from God. So doing good to those who hate us, blessing those who curse us. And I, I can just hear someone right now saying, but I don't feel like doing that. Well, none of us feel like doing the right thing. We don't feel like praying at times. We don't feel like encouraging people. We don't even feel like living at times. But that doesn't mean we go by how we feel. I know this all too well because I um, have kind of, until the Lord corrected me, I would pride myself in the fact that I was very emotional. I'm just an emotional person. Well, that's kind of a red flag. Okay, that means that I am one that just whatever, whichever way the wind blows is the way I'm going to react. And that's not steady. That's not steadfast. That's being a, you know, that's being a wavering person that can be tossed about like the winds of the sea. Well, what is that? In James, it says that's per a person who doubts. So we need to stay away from saying we're emotional people and saying, you know what? I know who I really am who I was created to be was a spirit that God has breathed life into to know that my inheritance is in Christ and in Christ Jesus, I am his daughter. And in that being, I am a, because of the daughtership or the sonship that I have with God. That's where everything starts from. Now, what, I'm learning as a daughter is that my emotions are real, but even our feelings are not of God. Like we have to remember that our feelings are based on past experiences that have told us who we are, but that's not, those experiences are not who we are. We went through those things, but God wants to take those things and do what with it. He wants to show himself in the midst of those moments and say, that, let me form you into who you were meant to be. Don't let those things forge you into something you were never meant to be. So going back to this is how we arise and shine, okay? We, we're kind to the unkind. We do good to those who hate us. We bless those who curse us. We pray for those who hurt us. We overcome evil with doing good. And we're living this God-inspired life in the midst of evil. So often we allow the evil to have the main narrative in our lives. For me, and I believe for many that are reading this, perhaps you are saying enough is enough to this never ending cycle that results in fill in the blank. For instance, the world and the church alike recite this quote often. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But here's what's amazing about God is when we do, when we love our enemies, 
it's going to seem like we've been doing the same thing over and over again. And we almost with this false expectation, expect them to change. But really what's happening is when we are loving our enemies, we're actually following Jesus. And in following Jesus, we are the ones changing into the likeness of Christ. We may never see those people change. And we may, but we may not. But what we for what we can for sure expect is that we will change for the better in Christ. Not just becoming a better version of ourselves, but becoming more like Christ. That's where it's at right there. So if you've ever read the book of Proverbs, I, I'm going to add this too. Read the book of James too, because James is like that New Testament Proverbs. And James, just to give you a little history lesson, was the half brother of Jesus. And I loved how, just as a side note, how he opened up that book. He didn't open up the book bragging that he was the half brother of Jesus. He actually called himself a slave of Christ, which I thought, wow. He knew a side of God that I want to know. And so the proverbial scriptures pointing to what the foolish and the wise do, okay? And yet the wise do the unconventional. They do the what we call the peculiar things. The things that cause the onlookers to sit and stand in awe and even say, why are they so different? How did they react that way? How did they respond so calmly? And they're giving evidence to the power of God and his love. That his love is immovable. His love does not count records of wrongs. His love is steadfast. And man, I needed that reminder even today. Even as I'm talking to you, I'm being reminded of that because I didn't respond very well to a situation that happened. And even though it was more like it wasn't in front of someone, it was more done just like kind of like I'm better than that, you know, than that. I'm like, whoa, I've just got corrected. But right now as I'm <laughs> as I'm talking to you, God, his love is so good. Um Forgive me, Lord, for that. And I just thank you for your mercy and your love and your compassion. That, Lord, thank you that you do not keep records of our wrongs, just like I should not do that to this individual that I'm thinking of right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that they're covered with the blood of Jesus. So in that moment of divine interruption, <laughs> thank you for hanging in there, not changing the dial. But this is how we remain in this world, but not be of the world. Now, listen, these are simple truths that are incredibly profound. They point us forward to the Father and his ways, ways that are much higher than our own. It's the foolish things of the world that can found the wise. And that can be found in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 27 and Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Now that we know how to be the light, why is it important to be the light? Well, I think right now we're probably getting that big time. Like, well, I can totally see why it's, it's to give glory to the Father. And for many reasons, one being that the darker it gets, the brighter we must shine. And most importantly, because it is for the glory of God that our good deeds are seen among people. Our good deeds point people to the Father. Our actions of faith revealed by God's love saves people's lives. It's all about God's violent love displayed upon the cross of Calvary. So that's just a sweet reminder right there of his goodness. And 
the favor of God, that anointing of God's grace that is doused upon us, that empowers us to do what we can never do on our own. And like it says in Proverbs 3, in the very beginning of 3, chapter 3, it says that, and I'm going to paraphrase, that when God's grace is doused upon our lives, it's from the loyalty and kindness that we wear as a necklace. And we never take it off for anyone or anything, no matter what. It needs to be seared or tattooed upon our hearts. When we live it out as though it were a must-have accessory upon our lives, then by default, we don't do this for the favor, but by default, favor happens. And the promise attached to this is that you will have favor with both God and people. It's for the purpose of leaving traces of heaven wherever we go. It causes even our enemies to live peace with us. Yes, the kingdom of God kind of living is what invades the earth so we can make a way for God to have his way within people on this earth. The prayer that Jesus prayed, giving example to his disciples of how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is how we see heaven on earth is through us by arising and shining. Because why? Because the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. I mean, that right there is just, it, it, it needs to fill us with just awe and wonder of him that he has equipped us to live this life so that we are not conformed to the way the world does things, that we're not conformed to the way the world responds to things, that we, instead of responding when people maybe yell hate at us, that instead of hating back, we remember the love of God that we received, this lavishing love. And from that place of receiving is where we give from. We don't give from our own bankruptcy. We give from the endless supply of God. It would be like this. It'd be like we have an account and our account balance is, let's just say $100,000. It's a lot, right? But then... God says, okay, here's my bank account. And my bank account is beyond the trillions. And this is the bank account I've given to you. And this is where you give from. So when someone hurts you or tries to offend you, do not give from your bank account of 100,000 because it will be depleted quickly. Give from my endless supply. Now listen, when he says use my bank account, that means we need to use his bank account because if we don't, then we're hoarding what's his. And that's called, I call it kingdom embezzlement. And we do not want to be embezzlers of God's love. What we have freely received, we get to freely give. So now what we do is, when we used to get hurt by people, we now hurt for them. This triumphant, victorious reminder, this triumphant victory of being in Christ, it helps us to see with heavenly wit, to see mission fields in the midst of battlefields because we know that the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And because of that, we know that we can arise and shine and be the light in the midst of darkness, that we no longer talk about how dark it is, but now we are the light of the world wherever we go, whether it's in our workplace, where it's hard to work, that we just bring in the light of God. We bring in the joy. We bring in that righteousness that we belong in Christ Jesus because it says that the kingdom of God is not what we will eat and drink, but it's what? It's righteousness, joy, and peace 
in the Holy Spirit. That's what we get to bring in. Well, I don't feel like bringing in the joy because you don't understand how they're really living, limiting us and tying our hands in these areas at work. Well, guess what? We go in and we say, Lord, I'm here for a reason. And unless you want me out of here, you will make a way to escape. But until then, I thank you, Lord, that you will show me how to be the light in this situation in a practical way. And he may show you, bring in round rock donuts. You're like, what? It's that simple? Yeah, bring in Rock Rock Donuts to your whole, all your coworkers. Or, you know what? Write an encouraging note to every person on your team. Write an encouraging note to the one that is your manager that you may have a, a problem with. Maybe there's a person that got your job that you wanted and you write them a congratulations card. Yeah, but that, that would be faking it. And no, 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 no. See, this is what we do. We get to die to the flesh in that moment. And we get to arise in Christ because of the glory of the Lord that has risen upon us. And in that, we get to be the light of that world that that person had never experienced before the love of God in such a simple and yet most profound way. That is what we get to do. That is why we're here. We are not here to highlight constantly darkness. It is one thing to fight darkness. It is another thing just to talk about it and do nothing. And so I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today on Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann. And again, and I say this constantly, you know, before I close today's program, I just want to say, remember, Jesus is your triumphant victory from that place of who he is. That's where we can see with his wit, where we can laugh, where we normally would have cried, not because we're faking it, but because like I love to say, as the Lord gave this to me years ago, faith it till you make it and faith it some more. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. To find out more about Triumphant Victorious Reminders, just go to triumphantvictoriousreminders.com. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann. We hope that you were empowered and encouraged by the insights and perspectives shared on this program. Remember, living in Christ transforms us into his likeness and enables us to live an abundant life with heavenly wit. With Teresa and we have learned to see mission fields in the midst of battlefields. Be sure to tune in next Saturday morning at 1130 for another edition of Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann. Until then, keep seeking Christ, who is the true perspective, and may his blessings be upon you always.